The Chess Olympiad is taking place today, and each country is putting together a team of their all-star players in order to determine which country has the strongest chess team in the world. And earlier today, we saw a game between Wesley So and Harant Melkumian, where in this position, Black played the move pawn to e5, attacking the bishop. But instead of taking the e-pawn, White decided to move away and encouraged Black to play the move pawn to e4. So the question really becomes, did Wesley So just blunder the most basic beginner tactic of all time or did white have something diabolical planned in this position that's what we're going to be taking a look at we're going to be taking a look at this entire game you're welcome to pause right here if you want to try to work it out and if there's any other games that you really would like to see from the olympiad or any other tournament please let me know in the comments below but here's how this game kicked off this was a caro con it was the two knights variation and after bishop to g4 white plays pawn to h3 and this is how white is able to secure the bishop pair in the early stages of the game now this is a completely standard way for black to play he went e6 and now we saw a slightly unusual move by white instead of the standard moves which are d3 or d4 we had the slightly rarer bishop to e2 just prioritizing castling and now black takes this opportunity to play bishop to c5 just saying hey you had your one chance to play pawn to d4 if you don't want to take it you don't want d4 right now i play bishop to c5 i stop you from doing it but white actually comes up with an interesting way of playing d4 in the future first he castles and after knight to d7 uh, now white decides to take on d5, takes back, and rook to d1. This is how white intends on putting a pawn on d4. So black keeps getting developed, pawn to d4 comes on the board, you gotta put your bishop back, and we see a few more developing moves, bishop to d3, putting the bishop on a more active diagonal. We see castles, we see bishop to f4, and here's where you get kind of the starting point for this structure. And uh, what you might know if you've ever seen this structure before is that one of the key central squares is this e5 square. This is where we're going to see one of the biggest battles. Both players are going to be trying to fight for it, and that was definitely true in this game that we saw. And then if all else fails, what typically happens is white will be going for some sort of kingside attack. Maybe black will be playing for some sort of minority attack on the queen side. But for the moment, a couple of the pieces are a little bit out of place, so both players need to take some time to reorganize their troops. And black actually undevelops with knight to b8 with the idea that you're coming back to c6 which is just a more active square for the knight uh, white decides to remaneuver his knight over to the king side where it might be useful for a king side attack but also the knight didn't make too much sense on c3 since after knight to c6 white is going to want to be putting a pawn on c3 in order to solidify the center okay black plays rook to e8 this is a move focused on this e5 square black's going to be able to drop the bishop back and then try to push for e5 white anticipates this coming white also puts a rook on the e file with rook to e1 g6 anticipating knight to g3 which happens anyway uh this pawn now is controlling a lot of these squares but it also gives black a little bit of an opportunity to retreat we're going to see a lot of the slow maneuvering in this kind of game well now comes knight to d7 and this is you know a true hint that all right this is now on the agenda e5 is coming up next and white does something very sneaky i assume at this moment Wesley So had already seen an amazing idea in this position, and he plays rook to e3, which is basically begging black to play pawn to e5, since now after pawn to e5, if white does just simply recapture, which is not what happened in the game, the rook on e3 actually becomes a major target, and this would have allowed black to play something like bishop to c5, where you attack the rook, and white would probably need to consider giving up an exchange, playing something like e6, and you might get some complicated line, because if you just go back and you count how many times this is defended, you're going to realize quite quickly that all of a sudden, white would just be losing a pawn here and ending up in a lot of trouble. The queen is kind of trapped. Things are, are very problematic. So the rook on e3 doesn't make sense, if your plan is to just take back this pawn. Uh, so what happened was he put the bishop on h6 and he just simply allowed black to push forward and fork his pieces and is absolutely incredible. But it turns out that white now is completely winning. Very, very, very winning in this position. And there's only one move that gets the job done. And obviously we're going to start sacrificing in order uh, to make this work, but the brilliant move that potentially wasn't seen by the opponent is Rook takes e4. And the idea is, if you take back, which is not what was played in the game, in the game Black just decided to move the knight, there's actually a checkmating attack. This is mate in six 
if you get this position. So again, feel free to pause if you would like more time. But the brilliant mate has to do with the fact that now this diagonal is wide open and we can begin with this check. Queen takes f7, this was the amazing idea. And after this recapture, we get a long four sequence forcing this king up the board. This bishop is not letting the king go back. This guy's not letting the king go back. The king has to go here. This is the only move. All of these pieces are clumped up. They're all in the way. So we got a mating attack. This is going to be knight takes e4. Again, there's only one move for the king. Now you play g4. You sacrifice the knight. You bring your last piece into the game. The king has to go here. This is checkmate. This is checkmate. However you want to get it done you just simply have a mating attack. So this was the brilliant idea that Wesley had spotted, and I assume he'd spotted it uh, before he played rook to e3. But now, in this game, if you can't take back this rook, you are in a lot of trouble. And it's not like you just lost a pawn, you're actually in grave, grave danger. Because after this knight moves away, Wesley goes here, highlighting the fact that it's not going to be easy to defend your f7 pawn. Like, all of a sudden, black is just going to get relentlessly attacked. And after f5... Boom! Give me that. Let me just sacrifice my way right through that. And now comes queen to d6, uh, attacking this bishop, also potentially giving more support to the g6 square, which could be important in some future gen uh, variations. But white comes up with, believe it or not, another tactic. <laughs> he starts with queen to g4. And after knight goes to g6, boom! Let me hit you with that one. And... The reason that the queen needs to be on d6 is it's actually a critical defender of the g6 square. So if you do take here, well then boom, I would hit you with that one. And this is not what happened in the game because this just simply would have led to a very quick checkmate. So instead, after rook takes d5, black had to go to f6 and now another very impressive move. And I think this is the kind of move that strong players are really good at finding. And when you get stronger at chess, you need to be able to identify all of the threats and the defensive ideas that your opponents have. Because here in this position, if it was Black's turn, he might be able to get away with some things by playing queen to h4 and just trying to trade off these queens. So white plays this move, pawn to g3. Very nice move, preventing the queens from getting traded. Uh, the bishop goes back, and only a few more moves later, after rook to f5, queen goes back. Check! And the bishop came in. Black decided to ultimately throw in the towel. He's just not going to be able to last for much longer. So I thought this was a fantastic game. Uh, Wesley So played an absolutely master game up to this point. And just to remind you of this absolutely phenomenal tactic that could have happened. Uh, here it was. This was the moment. Rook takes if you take back. Boom! Could have been some fantastic stuff. So good game to Wesley. And thank you guys for watching. Bye. If you're feeling trapped like a queen. No blunders, only sacrifice and see. Well, you may have the blues. Never be a chicken when you lose.